I'm going to show you how to start your workout with some great exercises that are going to potentiate and mobilize. First exercise after some light jogging and mobilizing exercises is a hands overhead leg cycle movement. Now this is designed to improve your heel recovery, your postural awareness. Make sure you push the thigh down into the ground, scrape the ground as you rotate the hip behind you and pull the leg to the fore. Take a second or so then repeat on the same leg. Do four times 10 left and right. The next exercise is a hands-on hips step back lunge. Make sure that you rotate the heel from the back to the front, similarly to the previous exercise, and push back strongly through the heel. So you're getting a reaction to the contact. Again, do four times 10 on each side. And of course, you can do the exercise using your arms. It's going to condition a degree of the stretch reflex and get you ready, potentiate for more dynamic exercises that follow. The third exercise, similar to exercise number one, is a reverse of exercise number one's movement. So we're taking the leg backwards before we're pulling it to the front. The first exercise we're pushing down and rotating. This one, we're activating the posterior chain to a greater extent by really focusing on the hamstrings and the hips to pull the leg through to the front. Make sure that the leg goes back about 15 to 20 centimeters across the track surface before you lift the heel through to the front. And again, pause before you re-perform the exercise. Here we have a further hands overhead exercise, and this is to develop the drive of the sprinting action. Simply put, lift the thigh to parallel and push back diagonally behind the hip to create some force into the ground. As before, you can of course use your arms whilst you're performing this exercise. Being able to swing the hip freely is crucial for sprinting and jumping. And here, the athlete is moving her hip freely without friction, trying to relax to get a swinging motion. And she's standing up into a takeoff or a max velocity sprint position at the end of the movement. Not only are you learning how to swing your hip, but you're also going to be creating instability across the body, which you need to combat. So as well as a technical benefit, it's also got a stabilizing preconditioning one as well. Okay, a more dynamic exercise, sprint arm action from a jump lunge or with a jump lunge, I should say. So every five or so seconds, switch from sprint arms to reversing the position by performing a jump lunge, keeping the arms going as you do so. We normally do this for 20 to 30 seconds, depending on the time of the training year, three to five times. That exercise obviously includes a plyometric element and a speed element with the arms in particular. It's therefore going to potentiate prime further along what you do in your workout. So your warm up should be progressive but from my perspective, it should also be highly technical and skilled. And therefore, by utilizing exercises that you're seeing on screen now, we're going to perform your workout in a much more effective way, and you're going to develop better technical qualities along the way as well. Here, we've got eccentric calf lowering, and this is primarily to protect the Achilles tendons from potential injury. Being able to absorb force through the calf muscles and the Achilles is crucial and by working eccentrically we can go some way towards protecting that area of the body against injury. And it's similar with this isometrically held single leg squat. The objective is to lower quickly to a one count and then hold the isometric position for about five to eight seconds before lifting up quickly Alternate legs between each repetition. We'll do five to six repetitions on each leg and two to three sets. I more recently came up with this next exercise, which is all about triggering the arm action for the hitch kick. So as you see, Bora's moving her arms as if sprinting, hitting a takeoff position, and then moving the arms around through the hitch kick arm action. So we're cognitively working on the movements that we're gonna perform later on in the session. And again, that's going to be a trigger and a facilitator for what happens later at the pit. Here, it's a very similar exercise, but this time we're performing the movement from a held static position and then moving the arms into the hitch kick movement. We would do five to six repetitions two or three times with this particular exercise. And like the other one, we wouldn't repeat it for the non-takeoff leg, as I see that as being 
contraindicated and potentially conflictory in terms of the learning process. If you wanted to do something on the other leg, you could just stand in sprint posture, for example, and hold position or do one of the other exercises. With these technical in-place drills, it's important that you as athlete or your coach knows what you're trying to get the athlete to do. So here, Bora is making sure that she pushes her foreleg out in front of her before she sweeps the leg down, which I believe is a crucial part of the hitch kick movement. So focus on what you're doing and make sure that you do the movements correctly. Here we have a very dynamic leg cycling drill. So the athlete swings the leg a couple of times and then whips it round to the front in the leg cycling sprint movement, heel recovery. So a couple of swings, then whip the heel through to the front. Now this can put a lot of strain on your hamstrings, so you do need to include this at the latter part of this unit of drills. And of course you need to be warmed up and prepared for this type of movement. There's gonna be a lot of eccentric stretch on the muscle the hamstring muscles as the heel of the foot comes through to the front and then has to be pulled back down to the ground. So this exercise has a great benefit for protecting the hamstrings against potential hamstring strain as well. With many of the in-place leg cycling drills, it's important to focus on pulling the heel up behind the body diagonally and across so that you're really generating hip power. The quicker the foot moves from the back of the body to the front, extends through the thigh and then comes down onto the track through what's called hammer blow, the greater power you're going to be able to input into your sprinting. So these in-place drills can prime you for those particular qualities. Regular repetition will therefore improve your sprint form and technique. What you've seen is the contents of one of my early session units of drills that will, as I said at the start, potentiate and prepare and mobilize the athlete for the subsequent more intense units of drills which follow. If you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video, or indeed any of my others, then do drop me a line or leave a comment in the section below. And as usual, good luck with your training and any competitions you've got coming up. Please do also like and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be notified as to when I upload new content. If you'd like to help me help you become a better athlete or coach, then do consider becoming a channel member. For as little as £1.99 a month, $1.99 a month, you can become a channel supporter and do just that. So head over to the channel's homepage, click on the membership button and see what offers are available. If you like the Jumps Squad merchandise that I often wear in these videos, then do check out the Spring Store. You'll see the products available underneath this video for example and I've launched a new backpack rucksack with the jump squad logo on it so do check that out